Hello, my friends. Welcome to another edition of Storytime here at the Colorado Railroad Museum. My name is Mr. Evan, and I am so happy to be reading a story with each and every one of you today. This week's story is going to be Two Little Trains. Two little trains went down the track. Two little trains went west. Puff, 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 and chug, chug, chug. Two little trains to the west. One little train was a streamlined train. Puff, 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 to the west. One little train was a little old train. Chug, 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 going west. Look down, look down, that long steel track, that long steel track to the west. Two little trains came to a hill, a mountainous hill to the west. With a puff and a chug, they went right through under the hill to the west. Look through, look through that long, dark hill, that long, dark hill to the west. Two little trains came to a river, came to a river going west. With a puff, 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 and a chug, 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 they went over the river to the west. Look down, look down below the bridge at the deep dark river going west. The rain came down on the two little trains, on the two little trains going west. And it made them darker and wet and shiny as they went on their way to the west. The snow came down and covered the ground and the two little trains going west. And they got white and furry and still in a hurry, they puffed and chugged to the west. The moon shone down in a gleaming track and the two little trains going west. And they hurried along and heard the song of a black man singing in the west. Look down, look down that long steel track where you and I must go. That long steel track and strong cross bars before we travel home. The wind, it blew, and the dust, it flew around the two little trains going west. But the dust storm drew not a toot or a hoot or a whistle from the trains going west. Then the mountains came beyond the plain, and the train started climbing west up and around and over and through the great high mountains to the west. The ocean was big, the ocean was blue, beyond the land in the west. And the little trains stopped, their trip was through, they had come to the edge of the west. Thank you, my friends, for joining us this week. We look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi, friends. I'm Ronnie Kramer here, one of your friends here at the Colorado Railroad Museum. And today, we're going to do an activity that has to do with this book, Two Little Trains, by Margaret Weiss Brown and pictures by Leo and Diane Dillon. Are you ready for this adventure? Yes. Okay, so one of the things that we talked about in the book 
was how the real train is going on an adventure. And the little boy who has the little train is also taking him on an adventure. And we're using things that we find at home for the landscapes of our adventure. There's our little train. The real train is going by up a mountain. Hmm, how can we make a mountain? Got an idea. So, I decided to create a big hill. What do you think is under here? Hmm. Let's see how we made our big hill. Ta-da! I got an old basket. It looks like a, a basketball basket. And then, I was trying to think of something to cover it up with. So, I got my sweater. Now, if you have a green sweater, you'll have a green hill. I have a white sweater, so I have a white hill. Maybe it's all like a snowy hill. So that's our hill. Now, I think one of the things they're talking about in the book is going through the mountain. So I have a tunnel. And we're going to take the train and push it through the tunnel. So there's our train going through the tunnel of the big hill. Another thing they talked about in the story was the bridge. And the bridge is going through some water. I can't play with the water here at the museum because there's no bathtub and no sinks. But I was really looking hard to find something that I can use as water. Today, I'm just using a piece of felt. I folded it up. And I found two cups. And a ruler that was in my desk. So, then I just put this across like that. Let's see if our train can go over. Choo-choo! There it is. So that's one way you can do it. I think we still have some more adventures up our sleeve. Today I have some tissue. It's white, it's fluffy. I can put it around here so it can look like a place where a train can go through snow. Choo choo. Just like in the book, there's some snow for our train. Finally, there's one other thing I thought would really be fun. And it is the moon. Trains go places at night. So we thought it would be fun to take our train someplace at night. So I thought I'd ask um, you could ask a mom or a dad or grandma or one of your brothers and sisters, and they can make the moon. Especially at night, this would be fun. You turn your flashlight on, and there's your moon, so your train can go. Doo -doo. Probably a little quieter at night, so they don't wake anybody up. So there's your moon. So there's some ideas that the book talked about. But there's also ideas that you can do on your very own. You guys are all really creative, so let me think. I like to go to the mountains, and I like to maybe take the train up to the mountains. So, one thing I've seen in the mountains is a bear. So maybe you can put the bear on top of the mountain. The train is going by. Doesn't even know the bear's watching. Is right past the bear. So there's some ideas that you can bring this book to life by using things around your house. Hope you enjoyed. Can't wait to see you again. Bye. Have a nice day.